good morning good evening good afternoon to anyone who's there in whichever part of the world you are thank you so much for joining the session on uh, a very quick talk on uh, data driven product decisions uh, i hope you uh, enjoy as much as i enjoyed making this presentation for you so first up some straight away disclaimers uh, anything that you see over the next 20 to 30 minutes are purely my individual opinions and do not represent my present or past employees in any way and uh, uh, so it's a little bit about me i am a product manager at amex i uh, lead the small business segment uh, when it comes to the customer relationship management platform that we're building so i'm a platform product manager at amex I'm based out of Bangalore, India right now, and uh, of course, I'm no expert. I would love to have your comments uh, in the chat window of this uh, you know, session, and I would be happy to take up those questions or comments as well. So uh, let's jump right in. The why, right? So data has become so important for us as product managers now that you cannot do away with it at all. Um, you know, so this one of my favorite quotes here that I've put out is uh, without data, you're just another person with an opinion. And there's not a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, who like opinions. You need data to prove your theory, your hypothesis, um, you know, your assumptions to make sure that you're going in the right direction. You're steering the team as a product manager in the right direction as well. Uh, thanks to the great statistic statistician who has, uh, you know, put out that quote. And uh, this is why it's become increasingly important for product managers to rely on data to drive a lot of those key decisions at all. Um, you know, uh, opinions don't matter as much because data is going to tell you what you've been uh, missing all along. And uh, uh, let's jump right into the what, right? So when you look at the other perspective of data, now that we've fairly established why data is really important as product managers in our everyday tasks, I'm going to stick to four key tenets on the what of uh, data. Uh, typically, you will find that uh, you know this is happening across every single product that any product manager uh, you know ever designs, develops with uh, his or her team. Uh, there is usually a problem that we are after, uh, you know, the, that we are offering the solution, and that's uh, something that we're going to start our uh, assumptions with. There is a problem faced by a certain persona. It could be a certain user group, a target market, a customer segment that's usually facing that specific problem. There is a product that we're gonna build uh, that's gonna address that problem for that very specific persona that we are after. Uh, eventually, there is a business value that we generate out of it. There is revenue, there is profits that we generate, there is a business model that we can generate out of it, which the organization that's designing this product can benefit at the end of the day. So uh, let's dive a little deeper into each of those key tenets that I'm talking about here. First up, the problem. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna call it as opportunity uh, instead of a problem. When you think about this, right, it could be a problem that we are solving for, uh, you know, uh, from scratch. This has never existed before. It could be an existing platform that you are uh, redoing. Uh, you know, there is an experience out there that you will have to make, uh, take and make it better as product managers. So first up, if you are, uh, you know, a product manager on an existing product, some ways where data can help you identify uh, the problem, uh, the opportunity rather in this case, uh, my, my intention is to not to show you uh, all the different data points and the KPIs that you're gonna measure, but instead the aspects you could use uh, to think about how you can uh, utilize data in determining the actual opportunity at all. So typically, if it is an existing platform or a product that you are a product manager for, you could look at tickets where it's going to convey a whole lot of information about what's going on. It could be service now tickets. It could be cases that are being raised. It could be simply issues on whatever mechanism and tracking uh, methods that you uh, have in your organization. But without actually speaking to the customer, there is so much you could understand from these tickets on evolving patterns, commonly at, you know, uh, commonly observed issues, uh, and rather pain points, right? It's gonna directly tell you what the user pain points are so that you could quickly put that into your, uh, you know, prioritized backlog and start addressing that. But eventually what we are after is 
that could possibly be an opportunity for us to change the course of the product altogether uh, basis that opportunity that's coming out of the next aspect is feedback uh, you know you always so if you are developing an android app or a ios app you always end up looking at the play store or the apple store comments and feedback that you get but it's such a powerful mechanism where feedback can directly tell you what the users are happy or unhappy about what is working and not working for the user and more so again uh, what needs what is missing and what could be your potential future feature on the product that is uh, something that you are owning of course discovery session right you could speak to the user directly uh, it could be the customer a paying customer or it could be a user depending on a you know the kind of product that you own but discovery sessions are always going to tell you what your identified opportunities are where you should actually go towards there are several different methodologies on discovery sessions but essentially a direct communication with your user is actually going to tell you what's missing out there and what's not missing uh, you know what's what's working well and what's not working well um it could more so be an unsolved or an unmet need as well right uh, if you are uh, if, so if it is a new product that you are developing from scratch so far we've been looking at existing products that uh, you know people are using out there it's been out there for a while but if it's a new product altogether you could look at competitor analysis as well if you have a competitor out there in the product segment that you are after uh, you could look at what the business model of your competitors are what opportunities are your competitors solving and how are they providing an experience to which target segment that they are after to even drive your decision making on which opportunity you should focus on you could monetize on and eventually build a winning product micro and macro economic factors come into play as well of course if it's a new product that you are after if it's b2c uh, for that matter b2b as well you will have to look at all the economic factors that would eventually decide the course of your product as well data could be flowing in from several touch points your social media your uh, you know simple news and research articles that uh, the economic factors that are affecting that market that region uh, uh, you know that can help drive your decision as well and lastly of course something that we are very uh, fairly familiar with is trends emerging trends evolving trends that are coming over the course and of course that means hype cycle is going to show you a lot of that you could base your whole opportunity identification on these trends so the first aspect that we have talked about is how you could use data for your opportunity identification and in that we have uh, sliced it across an existing product that's being used there today or a new product that you are uh, developing as a product manager so going back to the second tenet we started off with a problem which in this case is an opportunity it is usually uh, against so this problem is usually faced by a certain uh, set of people in this case a persona and how you could use data to decide which persona we are going to address this problem for or rather which persona we would want to design this whole new opportunity that we have identified is what we are going to discuss now starting with customer segment be it a new product or an existing product you would always have to identify which customer segment you are going to target for that opportunity you are designing this product for um, of course you will have to have your own identification of pilot users uh, but this will often be based on your the product offering it could be based on your business model your strategy of your product and so on but i am just trying to highlight some key tenets on how you can identify the persona using data so you will use it in your uh, identification of pilot users it could be demographics based on simply just the gender their age uh, their usage category and it could be the geography as well where they are located and it could also be based on uh, how you're going to scale that product over the course of time if your product is specifically focused on a uh, mass segment you would have to always consider your target segment or the people you're going to address that problem for eventually to uh, with the intention of scaling it which is why uh, you know scaling and uh, how you identify the people with the intention of scaling for future is also important for you once again i am not trying to highlight the different identifiers or the different metrics you could track but i'm just simply highlighting what are all the different aspects you could consider 
when you would like to identify the people you are building those products for. So we talked about a certain opportunity against a certain persona, and there is going to be a product which you will still have to track those metrics against. Uh, uh, this is something we are fairly familiar with, where when it's a product, you will have to look at several metrics against acquisition. What are all the different methods we have used for acquisition? Which one of those have worked? Uh, it could be email click-throughs, it could be campaigns, it could be outbound, inbound, cold calls, telecalls, so on and so forth. But essentially, how has your acquisition strategy worked? Should we change it? And is this data gonna drive my decision on the whole acquisition strategy at all? Consider the same thing about engagement. If you are a B2C, if you are a consumer of several of those mobile apps, there are so many engagement metrics that can be tracked that essentially tell you what is working in that product and what is not. Uh, some of the common food delivery applications out there, you could always see the kind of recommendations that the users click on. How many of those recommendations did they actually convert it to a purchase? And that's typically an engagement that you're gonna look at. And the different data points that you could collect from that mobile app that drives your whole engagement strategy. Should we change the recommendation model? Should my ML model be changed altogether? Uh, am I gonna show a different user experience altogether, which eventually drives engagement up or rather in the desired direction is how you could use data to drive your decision altogether from an engagement perspective. Of course, retention. Uh, no app is developed for the purpose of a one-time buy. At least there aren't a lot of apps out there that are meant for a purchase, you know, for a one-time purchase decision. Retention is key out there as well. You could look at several data points that eventually drove that customer to come back and make that purchase once again. Take the same food delivery application that we talked about. How could I drive those users to come back and make that repeat purchase? Could we throw in some different offerings that could be brought in over there? But essentially, how can I help them make that repeat purchase decision? And you are looking at different data points to eventually drive the course of your retention strategy. Growth. Every app is always having a total addressable market and uh, you wouldn't stop until you reach that end or uh, if you have if you have acquired all of those addressable uh, market as well, it could be 10 million, 100 million that you're after. What drives increased growth in your product is also going to be driven based on that data that you're looking for. And of course, something that we are uh, you know usually uh, familiar with is the AB or the multivariate test. This is a simple tool out there that helps you measure your product performance at all. Is the user gonna rely on a certain variable that we have put out there? What worked for them? What didn't work for them? And should we drive deep into something that worked to build the course of our future product features at all? So this is essentially some uh, perspectives on how you could drive your product decision. Uh, essentially, you're gonna you know, measure your product performance, putting these perspectives in mind. And another one, of course, I talked about, which is the fourth tenet. After you identify your opportunity, your persona, and your, uh, you've built a product around it, uh, eventually all of them have to start making, you know, start monetizing out of it. So some of those decisions could change entirely based on the way, uh, you know, your, your business model is driven around. Take the case of Zomato, which is recently, uh, you know, a blockbuster IPO that we, have, we, have, we are all familiar with here in India. They started off with just a food, uh, you know, a, a restaurant review application, which eventually, you know, became a, a restaurant uh, partnership food delivery program. So eventually they're even going to have their own payment, uh, you know, a, a, a spin-off that's going to come off from Zomato. What you need to do is look at data that can eventually drive those decisions as well. What is contributing to revenue? Which feature has eventually drove a revenue, a top line revenue or a bottom line revenue out here? What has contributed to profit? Where is that future profit pool that we can actually bring in money from? What's your return on investment in terms of how much money you have uh, put in to acquire customers? And what's the lifetime value? which is typically what something that we are familiar with, 
is essentially how much money you put in and how much money you made out of it after a preset period that we had initially agreed on it could be 3 months 6 months 1 year and have you actually made the intended returns on that and uh, most importantly is your business model working or not are you going to acquire more customers or not there is a direct feedback mechanism out there which is just your promoter score or your customer satisfaction score out there so over the course of this whole product life cycle rather it's just the concise version of the product life cycle where you know you have an opportunity uh, which is identified against a certain persona which you're going to address using your product which eventually has a business model out of it you have those key perspectives that you could consider when you measure your data you could drive the course or steer the course of your decision for the product based on these data and uh, uh, you know it, this is something that i as a product manager have realized of course late in my career that it is really important to look at data regularly as product managers uh, so we talked about the why and the importance of looking at data we've talked about a brief explanation of the what of course there are several different perspectives several measuring aspects several metrics out there several kpis that you would use Uh, out there if you just google about these this could be a starting point for you to start considering how and which data you could actually use which brings me to the whole conversation about we've talked about the why and the importance of looking at data the what and the different perspectives of looking at data around the product which brings us to the how uh, nothing fancy out here if you look at it but as product managers or aspiring product managers you would first have to sharpen your analytical skills you could you, your product could pump out so much data on a regular basis and it would all go to waste if you do not have that acumen to analytically look at that data and uh, you know find out trends that come out of it so you would have to there is no escaping this you might hate numbers but this has to be something that you look at from an analytical standpoint and this is something that all of us as product managers or aspiring product managers need to really sharpen our skills on that's the first part on how you could uh, become better at utilizing data to drive decision making on your products next thing is baking it into your objectives and key results uh, it's increasingly popular now for all of us as product managers to utilize okrs to set the vision on the now the next the later how you're going to track your success where you're going to go next and so on bring in data into your okrs a generic okr is no longer uh, interesting you would have to be very specific you would have to talk about how you're going to increase your uh, uh, nps you would have to talk about what that percentage increase is actually going to look like and you would have to specifically say when you're going to achieve that milestone so all of this is actually going to come in with different mechanisms of how you're going to measure those kpis when you bake it into your okrs you have no escaping from data you back up your whole assumption based on data and steer the course of your product vision altogether lastly something very very simple is make it a habit to rely on data it is important to analyze data and it is also equally important to know where and how you're going to design the data collection mechanism unless you make it a habit it will be very difficult for you to rely on data and let data do the talking for the majority of that part so spend a few minutes every day or perhaps a week every week or at a regular cadence that you uh, can agree on to look at data and figure out how your product is actually working out there you don't have to speak to a ton of people i know that's a stressful thing to do uh, if especially if you have an unhappy customer that you are talking with but unless you make it a habit it will be very difficult for you to rely on data to drive your decision making process don't go by assumptions don't go by generic methods of uh, defining your success but make it a habit to utilize data to for the different tenets that i talked about be it the opportunity the problem the persona or the product for that matter make it a habit to utilize data on an everyday basis and how you could rely on it increasingly uh, to drive your product decisions so we talked about why data is important for us as product managers 
we talked about the what and a very brief version of uh, you know uh, uh, how you could utilize data or what you are going to look at from a data perspective how there is a simple uh, you know way to look at how nothing fancy out here like i talked about and now essentially for us the weight on our shoulders are increasingly high as product managers to rely on data as well uh, quantitative as well as qualitative to look beneath that surface which you often find that is majority of that information is sitting out there waiting to be unearthed which is why you still see so many products being developed out there a lot of it based on research a lot of it based on data a lot of them are winning products uh, and none of them became winning uh, products without the reliance on data there are several examples out there and one of the most popular ones that we are almost all of us are familiar with is netflix you could look at several of their case studies and hbr studies on how they have utilized data to steer the course of their entire product decision altogether starting with subscription service on dvds to where it is now and what they are doing they rely on so much data and you don't often see them speaking with you directly and asking hey what's working well what's not working well they simply sit there collect a ton of data to utilize uh, to steer the course of their product decision and their whole user experience altogether uh, all of us could be uh, creating one such winning products as well if we also rely on data other than just assumptions and hypotheses to go about so i feel we could uh, we have barely scratched the surface with data and we have uh, you know so much more to uncover if we just look at data lastly uh it brings me to the end of a very brief presentation on how you could drive your data uh, how you could drive your product decisions based on data uh, of course i am no expert i am learning every day on the job off the job and i would be very happy to take in comments on the chat section or you know post the session if you would like to speak with me uh my linkedin credentials are out here happy to respond to you and uh best wishes on relying on a data on data a little more from now on for all you product managers out there and aspiring product managers cheers